Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here to the technical forum of the group exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells and Batteries. I'm happy to see you all here for the next presentation. It's about uh, fuel cell stack characteri characterization. And uh, what you definitely need is it has to be reliable. So uh, we'll hear about reliable fuel cell stack characterization from Ulf Groß. He is head of department fuel cell system from Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems. Ulf, here's your stage. Looking forward to your presentation. Here you go. Thank you very much, Ulrich. So welcome from my side also, a warm welcome to my uh, third talk in this Hannover Trade Fair. I will uh, present some ideas about fuel cell stack characterization, which is, of course, scientifically reliable. So let me start with a brief introduction into my, my department for fuel cell systems of the Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems. We are uh, situated in Freiburg, in the very south of Germany. And our core competences are, of course, the characterization of cells and stacks, which I will talk about, um, and especially uh, with a close look at the local effects. Uh, then we do lifetime testing, we investigate contamination effects, whether it's air pollution, hydrogen contamination or corrosion effects. And we do climate testing, I will show something later on about this. And we test complete systems, but also balance of plant components. Um, last but not least, we do a development of cells, stacks and systems. So our main motivation, of course, is to get fuel cells on the road. And our business model is to assist industry to uh, come to reliable products with a long lifetime, which are cheap and have a high performance. So therefore, you have to understand the um, certain effects within your products. And now I would like to address the topic of the stack level. So if you imagine a stack, what happens inside a stack? You introduce your fuel to one side and the fuel is somehow distributed all over the single cells within the stack. Usually, you only can have an educated guess about how the fuel is distributed to the single stacks. You uh, cannot be sure um, whether more fuel is flowing to one cell compared to the other cell. The same is uh, with the other side when you have air, and the air also is somehow distributed over the uh, single cells within the stack. Third thing is you have the cooling. Uh, the cooling might be more difficult than the gases because uh, usually the cooling flow field is somehow created by the backing of the cathode plate and the anode plate. So it's of course, it's defined, but it's not a clear flow field uh, like you uh, develop for the gas flows. Last but not least, you have the pressure, the compression set. And of course, when you assemble the stack the first time, your compression should be homogeneous. But if you imagine that in operation you create water and the membrane is humidified, and by the humidification of the membrane, the membrane is swelling, and shrinking when it's drying out. Um, you cannot be really sure about the homogeneous pressure distribution during operation. So the main question is, do you really know what's going on in your stack during operation and independence of different operation modes? And that's where we uh, uh, address um, this topic with our technique. So what you see is we have a large walk-in climate chamber, so you can do climate testing and investigate the behavior of your stack um, regarding to different climate conditions. We have a large test station which is able to operate up to 20 kilowatt electricity fuel cell power, so it's fair enough for an automotive short stack, for example. And what's really special at our institute is this little uh, black box. With this black box, it's a 50-channel device. We can contact up to 50 cells in a single cell and monitor the single cell voltage. So this is nothing special. But what's really special is that we can monitor simultaneously also the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy of a single cell. And 
I'd like to show something more on this. So in general, if we use our climate chamber, I would like to show some results. In this case, we work with the Ballard Air Cooled Stack 1020, which is very well known for especially for backup power applications. And what you see here is the temperature of inner cells and outer cells um, independence of different ambient temperatures. So we did measurements from minus 40 degrees Celsius up to plus 50 degrees Celsius. And what you see is that you have um, from time to time a huge temperature difference, dif uh, difference of inner cells, which are of course warmer, and outer cells, which are colder. So as you know, tem the temperature is very much related to the relative humidity and you can imagine it's different to operate this uh, stack if you have such huge temperature differences between the cells um, and to come to a, a, a homogene homogeneous operating conditions of each cells. We did measurements like this with another stack. In uh, this type, we used uh, an horizon stack. And you see a typical polarization curve of this stack. Um, and we matched this with um, infrared imaging. So we have an image of the temperature distribution within the stack. What's special with this stack, um, the cells are vertical oriented in this kind. And you see that you have not only a temperature difference from cell to the other cell, as we have seen with the Ballard stack before, but you have a huge temperature difference within the cell itself. So within that cell, you might have regions which are drying out more in the middle and regions which might flood due to low temperature and condensation. So this is something that we can offer, for example. I mentioned before uh, that we like to use uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy also within our stack characterization. And we like impedance spectroscopy especially um, because with impedance spectroscopy you can differentiate between the different processes that occur within the stack. So depending on the frequency that you apply on your impedance, you see something uh, about the mass transport resistance, so the, the gas supply to the electrodes, you see the charge transfer resistance, how electrons and protons fall, and you have a region where you can learn something about the proton resistance in the membrane itself. And at the end, you get an insight about mass transport, gas supply, and humidification. So if we go into detail, yes, I would like to show some results that we did with the Ballard stack, 9SSL. It's, it was original uh, created for mobile application and it's very often used in material handling applications. So uh, we did some sensitivity analysis. In this uh, slide, you see and the analysis of stoichiometry. So we changed stoichiometry from very low stoichiometries here to high stoichiometries. And of course, you see some effect in the mass transport region. If you have very low stoichiometries, you have a higher mass transport resistance. Um, if we investigate the effect of humidity. Of course, you see with very low humidities here, which uh, relates to this curve, that the resistance rises because of dry out effects. And last but not least, I would like to show you some analysis on the pressure differentiation. And we see with this stack, uh, the sensitivity to different pressures seems not to be very high. I mentioned before that we are able to contact each single cell and to do single cell impedance spectroscopy within a stack. In this um, slide, you see some results uh, that we did with a stack from AFCC. It was a 20 cell stack. And what you see here is the impedance spectra depending on the load point, on the current density that we applied. 
and you see in bold lines always the average of the impedance and in these uh, slide lines you see the maximum impedance of the worst cell, let's say it this way, and the minimum impedance of the best cell that we had inside the stack. What you learn out of this is first, of course, the dependence of the impedance towards the load that you apply on it. And secondly, you see that the AFCC stack works very well, so you have a very homogeneous operation. The differences between the single cells are not too, too great. They are, the homogeneity is really excellent. We did investigations like this also were as a partner of the Outer Stack Core Consortium, which is funded by the European Union. You see again a 20 cell stack. Now, of course, the Outer Stack Core Consortium, this stack was produced by the partner PowerCell. And in this case, we contacted not only each single cell, but we contacted the single cells at inlet and in outlet. So we could compare the conditions at the inlet regions to the uh, conditions of the outlet regions for each single cell. And what you see in this diagram is again the stack average line, which looks great. And um, the lines of the best cell and the worst cells were re really close together. But if you compare outlet of the best cell and outlet of the worst cell, you see some interesting um, differences. And of course, this helps a lot to understand your stack behavior and to go into detail and perhaps to optimize the stack and cell design or the operation strategy. Of course, we used our climate chamber also to do free start um, investigations with the stack and we proved that the stack is able to do free starts within an acceptable time of two minutes from minus 15, nearly minus 16 degrees Celsius up to 15 degrees Celsius. We also could do a long-term uh, testing of stacks. This is a very interesting project to us because we are testing nine stacks in parallel at nine different load profiles and each stack is tested over 10,000 hours. Last but not least, a really special uh, stack characterization technique, but for a certification of your stack, you need to do some short circuit testing and some testing of the um, isolation of the stack. And we established and developed a test bench which is able to do this bounce free. So, uh, a really smooth um, uh, operation of the stack. And um, the speciality is that we have. Um, up to 5,000 amps capability for some milliseconds. And with this technique, you get some uh, results like this. I'd like to point out that we have here microseconds on the time scale. So within several microseconds, the short circuit current rises from zero up to 1,000 amps. And this was a one kilowatt stack. So maybe a, a small stack. And then, of course, it's short circuit testing, the um, current decreases over several microseconds, milliseconds to zero again. So com coming to an end, I would like to um, summarize that we can offer a broad range of characterization techniques, especially a combination of single cell monitoring with uh, impedance spectroscopy, and we use this to do sensitivity analysis, um, which might also be according to the findings of the European project stack testing, which was presented before. We do temperature distribution uh, investigations, or we monitor the temperature distributions, of course. We monitor long-term testing, cycling uh, cycle testing. Uh, we use, can use our walk-in climate chamber. And uh, what I presented at the last is the electrical safety testing that we can offer. 
Thank you very much for your attention. I'd like to mention my next talk in the afternoon. It will be my last talk with this Hanover Fair, uh, fourth, uh, the fourth talk. I this will be con on single cell testing and testing of their components. If you are interested in my talks before, please have a look at the website. Um, you find a fantastic um, documentation and you can watch the videos there. And of course, you're hardly welcome to visit me and us at our booth. It's right over there, C62. And join me for a good cup of Freiburg roasted coffee. And let's talk about some details. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ulf. And uh, I have to admit, it wasn't only a wonderful presentation, but you also have the best coffee on the whole group exhibit. So <laughs> please visit Thanks him. <laughs> it is really true. So are there any questions right now at the moment you would like to give uh, Dr. Gross right now? Just raise your hand if there's any question. If not, you're once again invited to uh, his booth, which is uh, C62, just down the aisle, and then on the right-hand side. You can't miss it by the smell of the good coffee and of the, well, the very well uh, persons who are there and answer any of your questions. Thank you very much, Ulf, for this presentation. Thank you, Ulf. Thank you all. We have a short pause here in the technical forum until... Uh, one o'clock, and at one o'clock we would like to invite you again for the next presentation about smart hybrid systems, improving lifespan and reducing total cost of ownership. Uh, the presentation will be given by Sébastien Favre, project manager of H2Sys, Hydrogen to System, from France. So come back at one o'clock or stay here, whatever you like. See you then. <laughs>